probably the nicest room I've had uh, throughout the whole trip. It's pretty bloody big in all fairness. So I've got a lovely little view. There's a beautiful little garden seating area outside. And then this whole walk-in situation. spontaneous travels in Italy and genuinely I cannot fathom how ridiculous some circumstances have been how like movie plot worthy unpredictable incomprehensible things that have occurred just because I've let things unfold and just let the universe just do its thing rather than try to control or try to stress about routines I've just kind of like been open to opportunity and experience and just say yes to different things and meet different people um, but yeah, I'm in Pisa now. I fly from Pisa to Bristol and I didn't really want to take a three-hour train from Rome and immediately run to an airport and hop onto a plane. I kind of just wanted a moment to breathe and just to chill out and I feel like that's exactly what I'm doing because as soon as I got off the train from Pisa, I felt this wave of calm and peacefulness because just strolling through the streets. This place is so beautiful, it's so pretty. I've not really had the opportunity to explore. I literally just walked straight to my hotel. And it's so stunning. I got palm trees outside, like the streets are so quaint and beautiful and calm. And after being in Rome, I think this was definitely necessary because the chaoticness, the overwhelming, you know, crowds of tourists and you feel quite claustrophobic, you feel quite overwhelmed, you feel quite confined. Um, it is lovely just to be able to see some trees <laughs> and have streets that cars aren't driving over you. Um, so I feel like this is like a post-holiday holiday, just like a bit of a rejuvenation in a way. So it is currently Thursday and I did stroll around Pisa quite a little bit yesterday. There's not much to this place, in all fairness, it's beautiful um, and I was contemplating literally just sitting in the greenery with my book, having a few picnics and just taking it slow for the day just to recharge a little bit because I fly back tomorrow. But I have heard so much about Luca and so many beautiful comments about Luca. One specifically from a couple from Oxford that was taking photos of them on Ponte Vecchio in Florence. They suggested me visit um, Luca. So I looked at the train and it's only 25 minutes away. So I'm going to go over there because it's the walled city. It looks really beautiful, it looks really quaint. It looks really pedestrianised, which I love. I mean, that's why Rome's a little bit more overwhelming because one wrong move and you could literally get hit by a car. Um, so I'm going to go for a little day trip in Luca and see what it's all about and I'm very much looking forward to it. A bit more of a spontaneous, um, <laughs> unexpected little trip to another city so that should be good. I am so happy that I came here. Look at this greenery, this scenery. 
it's, it's so pretty. I've not even gone into it, I'm just walking along the outskirts. But it's so quiet, it's so magical. It is. Oh my god. The mountains in the background. It is stunning. See, this is what I mean by spontaneous trips. I was just recommended this by a couple that I'd met on Ponte Vecchio in Florence like last week. And it was only a 20 minute train, um, which I was sweating profusely on because one, I had ran there and two, my train line app, it was too close to the time. So I wasn't able to get a ticket, but as luck would have it, I wasn't checked and there wasn't any checking points on the outside. So free transport, which I do feel a little bit guilty about. So I'll make sure to get a ticket on the way back but look where I am, so pretty. Listen, nothing, just birds. Oh my goodness, this place is so beautiful and quiet and stunning. I'm just gonna like gradually walk myself through. So it's a walled city. I mean, I believe it's about two and a half kilometers circumference. So what, a mile and a half. And yeah, I'm just gonna go explore the cathedrals, explore the little quaint streets, find maybe a coffee shop somewhere. I brought my journal along, so maybe some journaling. beautiful. I've just spotted a little garden. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. How stunning. Wow. hidden gem and no one else here. I am so happy. It's so peaceful. It's so beautiful. Is there going to be another park around the corner? <gasps> yes. Oh wow. Oh wow. to treat myself to a meal at a restaurant. In all fairness, I prefer finding little sweet garden greenery spots um, and just getting like a little thing from the supermarket. So I've got another one of those like rice-y kind of risotto -y bowl things and I brought a fork with me. Uh, I've got a can of tuna and I've got some carrots and I've got some more fruit in my bag. But my view is pretty phenomenal. Oh my God. in that cafe journaling for about an hour and a half and I don't want to leave this place I want to live here I want to have babies here I want to get married here <laughs> it's so beautiful it's so beautiful it's so sweet it's so quaint it's gorgeous um, 
and I literally just sat there taking in the view because it was in um, the little oval area and it was stunning um, and I also just went to a jeweler's and I don't wear much jewellery I wear this necklace occasionally wear some earrings um, I've not taken this off for about four and a half years now because there's a lot of deep personal reasonings underlining the reasons why I don't take it off but I went to this jeweler's and I went there first of all and I didn't get anything but there was one little necklace that was absolutely stunning and I couldn't stop thinking about it so I decided to treat myself that <laughs> casual um, I decided to treat myself and I went back and I purchased the necklace it will absolutely remind me of this beautiful experience of the most blissful few hours of my entire existence um, it doesn't actually go with this necklace but it was so gorgeous so much so that I literally went back to the shop to go get it um, and yeah she was lovely her name was Alicia we had a little conversation she asked me about my arms and about my training <laughs> um, and yeah What's very important? <laughs> Your holiday. Because when you are in holiday, you fly. My painting is important for, to remember. Have you visited this? Oh, I don't think so. Oh no, is that outside? Yes, this is the wall of Luca. Yes. But no people see. And uh, that is in uh, the tower of the hour. It's a beautiful place to work though, isn't it? Yes, but the place is all beautiful and... Uh, 32 the, years of painting? Yes, wow. and they have the enthusiasm the first day and all the life you have to learn. Don't arrive in there. Oh, cheese! <laughs> What's your name? Stefano, and I was born 26 on December. Oh, you're the day after Christmas? Yes, oh, amazing. the day after Christmas. Oh my goodness, that was probably the most wholesome interaction I've had on this whole trip. This has been the best day. I had to get a little bit. Um, I would have gotten a larger one, but I literally have no space in my oversized backpack. I just had the most beautiful interaction with Stefano, who is an artist that's been painting here for 32 years. And it's like, it's these moments that you're going to remember when I come back and I'm so pleased that I get to document this because it's the most random, but I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> let's just put the cherry on top of the cake for the loveliest interaction and the loveliest way to kind of wrap up my holiday. But unfortunately now I am on my way back to the train because I have very little battery left on my phone and I don't trust me getting back without using my phone or GPS. So I'm to walk back towards the train. Back to Pisa, but I'm not gonna lie. This is probably the most beautiful place that I've ever been to in my entire life. I, I am so, so happy here. I feel so calm. I feel so happy. There are so many magical moments. There are so many beautiful things about this small little place that doesn't feel small because you know all the quaint little streets the little mazes I'm so happy and like the fact that I've just bought a 20 pound piece of art and a 17 pound necklace and it's not phased me kind of shows like I never like buying for myself I don't feel like I deserve it but because this place has been so magic I can't wait to put those pieces of jewelry on or put that little you know bit of artwork on my bedroom wall and remember not only my experiences solo traveling and backpacking for the first time, but my experience of coming to Pisa and Luca and meeting Stefano. <laughs> oh, I'm just so happy and my heart is so full and the mound just there. And I'm gonna go back, charge my phone, and then probably get my final helping of gelato in Pisa. 
outside the Leaning Tower. Because why not? <laughs> And so the Italian vlogs come to an end. Anyone who has watched all three videos or all three cities, thank you. Um, I'm sure I'll do another video kind of encapsulating my thoughts about this experience, but just to wrap it up here, this has been probably one of the most transformative, most exceptional experiences I've ever had in my whole entire life. Um, you know, as I've mentioned prior, I was so deeply anxious about coming here initially. The first day I arrived in Florence, I was contemplating leaving early. I was really anxious, I felt really isolated, I felt really insecure, I felt very vulnerable. And then within, what, 12 hours, I felt comfortable, I felt happy, I was connecting with like-minded others. I was forming, you know, very, very hilarious and spontaneous relationships with people. You know, I watched the fireworks on Ponte Vecchio with two lovely Irish girls that I met during a walking tour. I drove around the Colosseum at 2.30 a.m. with the loveliest tour guide. I ate spaghetti outside the Pantheon. I went to the most beautiful city of Lucca. I had a hilarious night out with a group of American guys from New York and Utah. I climbed up uh, Piazza de Michelangelo with a lovely Australian boy called Daniel. Uh, who was a cricketer and you know just the amount of like small conversations that I've met with just like couples taking photos or people on walking tours and just those conversations those relationships figuring out more about people and you know maintaining that conversation has meant that this solo travel experience has made me feel more connected and more um, you know I, I haven't felt independent I haven't felt isolated I haven't felt solo I have felt in control and you know I felt that I've got full autonomy regarding my experiences and the plan and the schedule and the spontaneous things that I do but this has been amazing and I'm so gutted to be leaving early and I'm so gutted that um, I didn't you know plan to stay for a longer duration but because this was my first time traveling I felt like I needed a structure I needed routine I needed time to go back home just in case I wasn't enjoying but now I know that I've got confidence to be able to get a one-way ticket somewhere to be able to just go with a flow wholeheartedly and you know commit to spur of the moment you know experiences <clears throat> the AC is totally destroyed my throat um, but no I was on the phone to my dad last night and this has been more than a trip, it's been more than just a little holiday, it's been more than just a little 20 second birthday celebration, it's been a really profound experience of self-discovery, which sounds so remarkably cheesy, I'm very much aware, but the fact that I felt comfortable to walk around unfamiliar cities, to go to restaurants, to take myself out on dates, to you know, meet people, to initiate conversation, to go to all these exceptional places, admire architecture, art and history, I've done that totally alone. Um, and last week I was 21 and, you know, a couple of years back I was deeply anorexic and struggled severely with social anxiety disorder and depression and yet here I am having the time of my life in Italy. Um, so it's been quite emotional, it's been quite transformative, it's been um, very indicative of my growth and it's only supported my continued growth. So yeah, that is me, I'm going to wrap it up here, I won't ramble on too much longer but I've got my flight back at 10 to 5 this afternoon. So I'm just gonna stroll around for a little bit longer. Thankfully, my hotel is literally 400 meters away from here. So um, it's easy enough for me to go to the ultimate tourist attraction of Pisa and just have a little hangout by the greenery. And yeah, that is me wrapping up this most weird and wonderful experience. And um, again, thank you for watching. Thank you for experiencing these random yet just giggle worthy moments with me um, it's very much a pinch me kind of experience very what is life <laughs> kind of kind of circumstances that have been happening um, and yeah I'm gutted that I didn't capture as much in Florence because I didn't plan on vlogging at all but then when things were happening I thought you know what I have to document this I have to pick up the camera I have to remember these experiences I have to remember these moments that have been so unpredictable and so unplanned because they're so magical um, but yeah, I will leave you here. I will catch you in the next video. If I just do decide to continue vlogging, I did kind of leave my YouTube channel a little bit dry. Um, but believe in your own strength and keep smiling. I'll talk to you soon.